It's okay. So let's talk about last night and Donald Trump's big speech. I want to bring in our panel, CNN political commentator and Donald Trump supporter, Andre Bauer, the executive director of the Independent Women's Forum, Sabrina Schaefer, and New York Times columnist, Ross Douthat. He's also a CNN analyst. Welcome to all of you. So, Andre, I know you were listening to Donald Trump's big speech last night. As you were listening, what went through your mind? Well, number one, Lee Atwater and creating a bigger tent. This was a message that didn't just play to the base. This played to folks that could be moderate Democrats, independents, and it played to those folks that really don't know where their party is. The guy that gave me a ride over this morning, I asked him what he thought. He said, I've never been a Trump fan, but I thought he really reached out and crossed some lines that, that I wanted to see him say. You know, he thought it was the best speech he'd ever heard. I thought he did, as far as from Donald Trump, I thought he did a great job, and, and it was quite refreshing, to say the least. Um, and, and Sabrina, um I think that um, Ivanka Trump, uh, you know, she started her speech by saying, you know, I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I'm from the millennial generation, so I'm sort of an independent. I talked to delegates about that, and that, that resonated at least with the woman I spoke to from Rhode Island. Sure. I mean, I certainly think that she was appealing and attractive, and she, she touched on some important issues. Um, presumably, it would have been nice to have been hearing about sort of some of the, the issues that she touched upon, sort of the suite of workplace policies that she referenced and challenges that working mothers face um, much earlier in the campaign. I know obviously the Independent Women's Forum works tirelessly on these issues and we work with a lot of um, partners in, in Congress who are eager to sort of do something constructive on these issues. Um, but that being said, I think it was a step in the right direction for the campaign. And, and Ross, do you agree? Because Mr. Trump did mention the, the gay community and it, and it got a big positive result from the crowd. Listen. As your president, I will do everything in my power to protect our LGBTQ citizens from the violence and oppression of a hateful foreign ideology. Believe me. So, so Ross, what do you suppose that means? Because the Republican platform does not support same-sex marriage. Well, I mean, Trump is clearly trying to make play for um, essentially gay votes in the aftermath of the nightclub shooting in Florida. Um, that, that's sort of the, the short version. The longer version is that Trump doesn't care about the platform. Trump is not a religious or social conservative. Um, Trump made a very passing reference and sort of thanks to evangelicals for supporting him, even though he probably didn't deserve their support, and then promised sort of micro thing on religious liberty. Uh, but this, the, his speech didn't mention abortion. Um, there was no traditional Republican narrative of family, faith, community, and so on. Trump is trying to forge a very different party, and he's forging it through a kind of critique of the bipartisan consensus. That's what this speech was really about, on trade, on foreign policy, on immigration. He was attacking both Democrats and Republicans, George W. Bush implicitly, as much as Hillary Clinton, and that's that's what he's trying. That's basically what he's trying to do. He's trying to take the Republican Party in a direction that it hasn't gone before. And, and you know, when he talked about trade, though, Andre, you know, re and renegotiating trade deals like like NAFTA, that didn't get a big reaction from the crowd. What do you make of that? Well, number one, he needs to quit worrying about the crowd. He didn't get elected a lot by that crowd. This is a different Republican Party. He had seven or sixteen worthy opponents no chance of winning a year ago and he won and he won resoundingly because the people out in the streets are fed up with the status quo they're fed up with both parties not just the republican party and the democrat party they want difference and he is actually he's got the, the i think he has his finger on the pulse of the heartbeat of America more than any other politician in current times. Sabrina, I was on the floor of the convention while Trump spoke, and he did get a, a massive reaction from the crowd. The people I talked with loved him. But the, but the challenge for him, of course, is to uh, be more inclusive when it comes to different types of voters. Did he accomplish that last night? I certainly did not feel that way. I mean, look, I am all for the modernization of the Republican Party. I think that we absolutely need to grow the conservative movement to include women and younger voters and voters of color um, and voters of all ages. Um, but what I heard last night was there was, no, there was no hope, there was no optimism, there was no confidence in the American people. This was about instilling fear and, and, um, and sort of anger um, and not in confidence in government or our existing institutions, but in this one man. 
And that's what made my stomach turn. I want to have confidence that our government will take a step back, allow the American people to flourish, allow them to have the freedom um, for, to have economic opportunity and job creation and to carve out lives that work for them. I did not take that message away from last night. Interesting. Absolutely um, not. Donald Which Trump was... said, uh, oh, go ahead, Ross. I, I was just going to say that's absolutely to hear you, but go ahead. not. It was not in any way a sort of Reaganite conservative speech. This was a, it had no ideological vision of smaller government. It was a strongman speech, you know, where Trump basically said, I alone can solve all of these problems. Um, you know, come under my wing and I will protect you. Um, and there's, an, there's a sort of rhetorical effectiveness in that. I, I think the speech actually read better on the page than it played. I think Trump ended up sound, sounding too much like a strong man, sort of always, you know, always taking one tone and shouting his way through it. But that's where we are. It's not, there, there's, you know, there's an ideology here, it's, but it's a nationalist ideology, and Trump is its father figure, basically, and that's the campaign he's trying to run. And Andre, I, I will say, because Donald Trump said many times, you know, I'm going to fix this problem right now. But he didn't say how, and he's talking about big, complicated problems. Is that really possible? Well, the contrast here is eight years ago, we had a great order who promised hope and change, and it didn't move in that direction. Anybody can paint you the great picture. He said, look, we have real problems in this country. I'm a CEO. I've done it starting with the Commodore Hotel when I was a young man. I've taken it with an ice skating ring. I've changed the New York, New York skyline. And I did it by surrounding myself with competent people and listening to others. And he's demonstrated it through his whole life. It's not just I'm talking about this great thing. He's changed so many things that he put his finger on. And he's saying, hey, I want to do that for the American public. We're not where we want to be. We're not the great country we were after World War II. And I want to take us back to that greatness. All right, I have to leave it there. Andre Bauer, Sabrina Schaefer, Ross Douthit, thanks to all of you.